It is clear that the call of the people to engage in this bus tour to put a face on the facts of poverty is now more needed than ever in light of all of the lies we're being told about emergencies. We know what emergencies are. In the Bible, Isaiah 10 says, woe unto those who legislate evil and rob the poor of their right and make women and children their prey. That's an emergency. Matthew 25 tells us about an emergency, and that is when people forget, particularly nations, that ultimately they will be judged by, not by the size of their buildings or the speed of their planes, but how they treat the poor and the hungry and the sick and the stranger and the immigrant. We do have a national emergency. We are a nation that has vast established injustice, not established justice. We are a nation that is not promoting for all the general welfare. And these are the real emergencies. The real emergency in this country is 140 million poor and low wealth people. The real emergency is 52% or 39 million poor children below 18 years of age. 41.9% or 21 million elders above 65 that are poor and low well. 42.6% or 65.8 million men that are poor and low wealth. 45% or 74.2 million women that are poor and low wealth. 60.4% or 26 million black people that are poor and low wealth. 64.1% or 38 million Latinx people who are poor and low wealth. 40.8% or 8 million Asians that are poor and low wealth. 58.9% or 2.14 million native and indigenous people who are poor and low wealth. 33.5% or 66 million white people who are poor and low wealth. 41.6% or 65.8 million, as I said, women and 74.2 million women. And the majority of the poor are white women, children, and the disabled. 62 million people working for less than $15 an hour while we lock people up who fight for 15 in the streets while 400 families make an average of $97,000 excuse me, yeah, $97, an hour. This is the vast economic emergency, the gaps in between the poor and the wealth that we've not seen since the Gilded Age, mm -hmm. since the days of the Great Depression. And I'm from the South, where many politicians support Trump, many are his enablers, many still play the division and the lies of racism, get elected through voter suppression, and then the real emergency is how they pass policies that hurt a vast number of people in the southern states. If you just looked at the former 13 Confederate states, or the, what we call the southern states, there are 52.7 million poor and low-income people in those states from Virginia to Texas. 24 million of them are white, poor and low income people, many times who are tricked into voting against their very own interests. 28 million are people of color in the South. 13 million of the uninsured people are in those 13 southern states. The 13 southern states have more than one third of the total number of poor people in this country. And the number of poor whites in those thir 13 states is more than one-third of all the poor white people in this country. This is the real emergency. And why we must have a moral fusion movement of black and brown and red and yellow and white who come together to put a face on this emergency. And if we use the money that's, that's going to, that people want for the wall to address the real emergencies, more than three million low-income children or two million low-income adults could receive health care for one year, for one year. And finally, while the GOP agenda and rhetoric have been abhorrent and hostile toward the poor and accommodating to the greedy, the emergency is also that both parties, even the Democratic Party, must find its voice. We can simply cannot have the same political discourse that we've seen for the past 50 years that has almost abandoned 
even talking about poor, let alone systemic racism, systemic poverty, ecological devastation, a war economy, and the false moral narrative of religious nationalism. The president and his enablers have decided to exploit a racist lie that there is some emergency of Spanish-speaking people at our southern borders trying to get in the country. Well, the real emergency is already in the country. The real emergency of the 140 million people, the 37 million people, 140 million low, poor and low wealth, the 37 million people without health care, the 4 million people that get up every day that can buy unleaded gas and can't buy unleaded water, the veterans that are suffering because we put more money into building weapons systems than taking care of many of our veterans who commit more suicides and die more by suicides than they do on the battlefield. This is the real emergency, and that is why the Poor People's Campaign is calling for this Poor People's Campaign National Emergency Poverty and Truth Bus Tour that will crisscross this country. And Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, the co-chair, will talk about it at this time. Thank you, Reverend Barber. I begin with a quote this morning from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. The emergency we now face is economic, and it is a desperate and worsening situation. The dispossessed of this nation, the poor, both white and Negro, must organize against the structures through which the society is refusing to take means which have been called for and which are at hand to lift the load of poverty. And although it is 50 years later, these words ring true today. Indeed, there is an emergency going on in this country, an emergency of systemic racism, poverty, ecological devastation, and militarism. In Lowndes County, Alabama, people have raw sewage in their yards. Mm -hmm. In Paradise, California, Tens of thousands of people have joined the ranks of the homeless because of the wildfires. In West Virginia, there are tens of thousands of veterans who are struggling to make ends meet. In Texas, that border state that we're talking about so much, minimum wage workers still just earn $7.25 an hour. Mm -hmm. But the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for more revival, is organizing. We are organizing against the structures which, are, which society has and is refusing to take the means which are at hand. When the money that is being diverted to build a monument to white supremacy on the southern border could pay for health care for more than three quarters of a million veterans, mm -hmm. when that money that is being paid, diverted, to build a monument to white supremacy could fund 100,000 elementary school teachers, mm -hmm. when the money that is being diverted to pay for that monument to white supremacy could open up 898,000 head start slots for low-income children. Mm -hmm. We know mm -hmm. as a nation we can lift the load of poverty. The Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, is a grassroots state-based movement in 42 states and Washington, D.C. And in 2018, we waged 40 days of nonviolent direct action, marking the most expansive wave of nonviolent civil disobedience in the U.S. history. Now, today, we are announcing the launch of the National Emergency Poverty and Truth Bus Tour, where we will be hitting more than 28 states, coast to coast, mm -hmm. region to region, highlighting the poverty the racism, the ecological devastation, and the militarism 
that our elected leaders would rather ignore mm -hmm. or in some cases make worse. Mm -hmm. We will be visiting Alabama, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Florida, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, mm -hmm. Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Mississippi, Missouri, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Washington State, the District of Columbia, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. In California, we'll begin at the Yurok Reservation. In Kansas, we'll visit Dodge City, where there was massive voter suppression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Mississippi, we will see how poverty is worse than it was 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. In New York State, we'll visit Elmira, where there are two, not just one, two maximum security prisons. In South Carolina, we'll show the hunger that still exists, the poison water that still exists, and how people are raising up to organize. And in Utah, we'll visit San Juan County, home to the state's highest poverty rate, the nation's last uranium mill, and the Ute and Diné people who recently elected the county's first indigenous majority commission. We encourage the media to follow these tours, to pay attention to the real emergencies that are indeed worsening in our nation today. And we encourage poor people and clergy and advocates and activists to get involved in the 42 states involved in the Poor People's Campaign and National Call for Moral Revival. We can address racism, ecological devastation, and militarism. We can lift the load of poverty. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Yes, we can. Amen. Yes, we can. Amen. 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 I want to invite Rabbi jo <clears throat> Jonah Presner, if he would come at this time and introduce himself as one of our faith partners and will be helping us to make this real. Thank you, Bishop Barber. Thank you, Reverend Theo Harris. I stand before you as a reformed Jewish rabbi, leader of the largest and most diverse denomination in Jewish life, but I stand before you as a faith leader surrounded by Muslims and Christians and Jews and people of all faiths across lines of difference because we stand together today having faith in the ultimate authority, a higher authority than those who would assume power and privilege to call for a fake crisis, call out a fake emergency. And we do so as faith leaders in the spirit of my ancestors, the Hebrew prophets, and in many ways the inspiration for so many of us who are here today. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, it was very clear what we are to do. It is to do good, to devote ourselves to do justice and to wrong, uh, to undo all that are wrong, to uphold the rights of the orphan and defend the case of the widow, the widow and the orphan who are the most vulnerable. And yet Isaiah, in his time, called out the authorities and said, your rulers are rogues and cronies of thieves. Every one of them is in love with presents and chasing gifts, yet they ignore the case of the widow. They ignore the cause of the widow and the orphan and Adonai will bring, our Holy One, O oh God, will bring this charge against the elders and the officers of God's people. You have ravaged the vineyard. That which was robbed from the poor is in your houses. How dare you crush my people and grind the faces of the poor in the name of a fake emergency. Our rulers, our authorities have crushed the people and are grinding the face of the poor. The Poor People's Campaign and National Call for Moral Revival is a direct response to that fake emergency and it is calling out the actual emergency. We will be for the widow, the orphan, and the stranger because for thousands of years that's what people of faith have done and that's what we will do to reclaim the soul of our nation. That's right. Yes, 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 yes. 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 
And now we int introduce uh, Reverend Denise Anderson from the Presbyterian Church USA. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Theo Harris, who is one of ours. Thank you, Bishop <laughs> Barber. I'm the Reverend Denise Anderson, Coordinator for Racial and Intercultural Justice with the Presbyterian Mission Agency of the PCUSA. And when we are concerned with our social policy as a church, we understand that the church, if it is to remain true to its biblical roots, theological her heritage and contemporary practice must not fall silent. The biblical witness is thorough in its call to justice. Justice is mentioned over 2,800 times in the sacred text of our tradition. So that su should suggest something about how urgent justice is to God. And if it is urgent to God, then it should be urgent to us. And when justice is stifled, then that then becomes our emergency as the church. And yes, there is a crisis at the border, friends, but it is not just one of migration or immigration is that too many of the workers along the border make only seven dollars and 25 cents an hour who can live off of that it's that texas a border state refuses to expand medicaid and too many of her people cannot even go to the doctor it's that children are being separated from their families and we're not even trying to reunite them that's the crisis at the border the preamble to the Constitution of these United States says that it was ordained to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, and promote our general welfare. This manufactured crisis is not about defense, not when the same energy isn't kept for domestic terrorists. Oh this is not about this is not about the welfare or the common good of our people, not when a working government is used as a bargaining chip and too many of our own citizens are then thrown into financial ruin. And there is no establishment of justice when our brown siblings to the south are scapegoated for all of society's ills. We name this racist injustice for exactly what it is, a ruse, a waste, and the true emergency we must confront. This is why why we need the National Emergency Poverty and Truth Bus Tour. This is why we need a people's budget. This is why we need a poor people's campaign, a national call for moral revival. This is why we need massive organizing and mobilizing of impacted people so that justice can roll down like waters. Right. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. I'm going to ask um, Denise to or to get on Liz's right side and Brother Rabbi to get over here on my left and the speaker so we can take any questions that may come. We also want to be very clear that it also, the emergency is not just the fact that people are poor, but the refusal over these last, and we say it like this, for the last 40, 50 years, we've not dealt with, no party is exempt. The difference now is we're having an actual exacerbation of attack on the poor yes, right. and, a, and a determination to go backwards, mm -hmm. right, a determination to go backwards. Mm -hmm. Democrats haven't done enough, but in this place under this president and the enablers, there's actually an attempt to undo what little progress has been made. And that is an emergency of our politics and of our souls. And it is not just that people are poor. Mm. It is not just that people live with raw sewage and knowledge. It is not just that people make 725 and they don't make a living wage. These policies and refusal to address these issues murder people. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Now, that's strong language. It's true. But it's biblical language. Mm -hmm. If you read the prophets, yeah. over a quarter million people die every year from poverty, more than die from cancer and heart attacks. According to many studies, something like 2,500, 2,800 people die for every 500,000 people denied health care mm -hmm. in the richest nation in the world. Mm -hmm. These are real emergency. I was just with a woman in Laos County who has open sewage in her yard. She's been there for a while. There's a lot of blame to go around. But, to, but to, 
try to go backwards is atrocious. This woman said to us the other day, Liz, and I'll close here, I have every disease but AIDS, every disease you can get from living in, in a place where raw sewage stands in your yard all the time. She says, my children have every disease that's ever been studied as being caused by contamination, bacteria, and raw sewage. She said, but I'm still fighting. Mm. And we cannot leave those people alone. Amen. That's th these are the real emergencies, and it's beyond shameful. I don't know what the word is beyond shameful, mm -hmm. to call for a fake emergency, a racist emergency, right. an emergency rooted in white supremacy, right. and not address what really are the emergencies in this situation. So we call on all po politicians to step up. We call on our president to step back. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we, as the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, will never step away yeah. from this fight. Are there any questions from those on the phone? Thank you. We will now begin the question and the answer session. If you have a question, please press star, then 1 on your touchtone phone. If you're using a speaker phone, you may need to pick up the handset first before pressing the number. Once again, if you have a question, press star then one. While we're waiting for those on live. While we're waiting on live stream, to, um, we ask everybody to text 90975, text MORAL to 90975. Text MORAL to 90975 to go directly to the Poor People's Campaign Information Center, social media, and to stay on top of what's going on and to know where these tours are going. That's MORAL at 90975. Are there any questions? Thank you so much, all of you who have joined. Thank all of you from, from on live stream. And let's say it together. It's time. It's time for the national, for the national emergency. Emergency. Poor people's campaign. Poor people's campaign. Poverty and truth. Poverty and truth. Bus tour. Bus tour. We will show. We will show what the real emergency, the real emergency is in America. Is in America. In America. And we will. And we will demand. demand that America, that America address, address the, real the real emergency. God bless to all of you. God bless. All right. All right.